Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm a Rise Up Our motherfucking D Bizarre. I'm AZD, and I'm coming to you from San Jose, California. This is the west side of the United States. North, south, east, or west. This is one love, one family, one nation. We are INC Nation, a nation of warriors, players, hustlers, kings, and queens. And we also appreciate all other women. Everyone can play the game with us, all right? Now, first and foremost, I'm an entertainer, all right? Everything I say is entertainment. Don't take anything seriously. You'd be a fool to do that. Number two, you have to be adult to watch this. It's an adult show. And don't break the laws of the land that you're in. That's for your own good, okay? If you can follow these rules, then we're good to get started. I'm going to talk tonight about relationships. Again, relationship, the mind, and communication. I believe that to know oneself, one knows oneself only in relation to others. I'm going to explain that again. You can know yourself. But the moment you interact with another life form, another part of you shows up that wasn't there. It's almost like you can't fully be yourself the moment you face somebody else. Now, if you face two people, three people, you face the whole world. You're facing judgment. You're facing what other people think about you. And for some reason, this is a very big deal to us. For myself, I find, I find myself and I find my, my sanctuary where you feel safe. I find my sanctuary in relationships. It's very interesting. Where most people, if not all people that I know, are insecure, scared, unsure, doubtful, chaotic, in that same area, I find peace. And that's the area of relationships. It's not that they're not crazy. Man, I've had more crazy relationships than anybody because I've had more relationships than anybody. It's not that. It's that when I have relationships, I discover pieces of myself that were hidden from me until the other person showed up. So I'll give you an example, okay? I'll give me an example. I have a friend of mine who likes jazz music, okay? A lot. Now, I didn't know how much he liked jazz music. Recently, I got into some fucking, I was on some radio station or something, and I, 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 anyway, I stumbled on some music, and it was like the blues, right? B.B. King blues. Fell in love with this shit. So I was in Los Angeles, and uh, he was in my car, and I played one of these blues, and he said, oh, that's so-and-so. I said, you know him? He said, yeah. And then he started talking about that sort of music, but he's a fighter. He's a fighter. He's a jiu-jitsu fighter. I was like, how do you know so much about that? He goes, that's my passion. I grew up doing this stuff. I said, really? He goes, yeah, check this out. And he lets me listen to some stuff. And then he starts giving me a breakdown of jazz. I'm like, so what's so exciting about jazz? Like, what is this all about? Okay, now check this out. Prior to that conversation, I was one way about jazz and blues. That's how I was existing. That's who I was, right? I have a conversation with another human being who I consider my friend. Through dialogue, I see how excited he is about jazz music. And he starts breaking it down for me. And the way that he was, the words he was describing when he was talking about watching jazz or playing jazz really made me appreciate what jazz was. Well, at least way more than I did before. So then when I started to listen with him, I was beginning to listen with different ears. So literally, this is crazy. So literally, you could say, my capacity to hear music elevated by having a dialogue with a friend of mine who appreciated music much more than I did. It's crazy. Yesterday, I had the pleasure of being ringside at uh, Dragon F House MMA fights, okay? If you look at my Instagram. By the way, if you guys are not on my Instagram, you gotta get on my shit. Okay, I'm barely using Facebook. Barely. I knew Facebook would die. I, I told you guys. Um, I knew when it was hot and I knew when it's not. I'm telling you, it's all about IG right now. Stay away from Snapchat. Stay away from Twitter. IG. Put Invest and all that shit in there for until I tell you later. Um, but anyways, um, I, was at the, I was at the fights and I was literally like, like right, I mean, I was there, right? Here's the fighter, here's the ring, here's me. It was the best seats I've ever had. And that's great, you know? But something interesting. 
there was a super buff black guy. He's in, he's in the video. And he was fighting another black guy who's scrawny looking. You looked at these two and you thought to yourself, that big guy is going to pummel his ass, then probably eat him. I don't know. He looks like he's going to get hungry and he's going to eat his, his opponent. And then you looked at the other guy and the other guy, you were just, you know, you know what you really thought? You thought, fuck, bro, get out of there. Like, you don't need to do this. How much are they going to pay you for you to fight that gorilla? I don't know if I would fucking fight a gorilla for that much money in a cage, right? This was what was going on in people's minds. There was a man and a woman sitting next to me. And one of them made the comment of, oh my God, look at that guy and look at the other guy. And then the other person, I honestly don't remember. I, I actually think it was the woman who corrected him, but I'm not sure. <laughs> but whoever it was said, the other guy is a Gracie Jiu-Jitsu black belt, which is what I have. And then she said, or yeah, it must have been she, because that's the worst of my head. She said, he should be able to beat him. Now I caught the, the edge of that, right? And I thought, that's very cool. The fight started, and I thought to myself, the gorilla is going to beat the shit out of the other guy. No, 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 that didn't happen. It went three rounds. The gorilla won with decision, but wasn't even anything. It was neutralized pretty quickly. Here's what I want to tell you. There was a point where the guy was on his back with the other man between his legs. Like a missionary, you're going to fuck somebody kind of thing, right? You've seen this in MMA. And... If you were sitting with somebody who was trained in jujitsu, they could tell you what the bottom guy who looked to you maybe like he was getting beat up, what techniques he was using to neutralize the size of the guy on top and tire him out. To the outside eye, it would look like one guy is on the bottom getting punched. To the trained eye, it looked like the guy on the bottom was blocking the majority of the hits and tiring out the other guy. Now, through dialogue, through relationship with another person, you would then watch the fights the next time with two different sets of eyes. One, you would see a smaller guy, but you would know they both weigh the same because it's a weight class. So it's just a muscle mass difference, but they weigh the same. You would say, okay, although the other guy looks bigger, I'm sure this guy stands a chance. One. That's a difference in perspective suddenly. Two, when the guy gets on his back, you might be looking to see if he's doing the things you saw. So once again, your ability to observe your, your world expanded by having a relationship with another person who knew more about the subject. As I live my life, I'm amazed at all the different stories that people have. I like talking to people. I'm inspired by talking to people. People don't understand how much I admire them. I think this is something that everybody misses about me and needs to know about me and why I'm so good at what I do. Truly, without a doubt, there is nobody on the planet right now that can do what I can do when it comes to women and in social interactions. It's not just women. To get women of that level, you're gonna have to control the men, the family, the fucking ex-boyfriends, the future wanted boyfriends, right? Everybody. A big part of the reason I can do what I can do is you'd be shocked at how often through the day I admire, uh, in quotes, ordinary people, and I'll put them in quotes. I could be a target, and the person's ringing me up, and they say, how's your day? And I say something, and they don't understand I'm admiring them. Now, they feel a feeling of a very nice positivity when I speak, and so I'm able to create very good effects on people. But what they, what they would be surprised, and you might be surprised, is how quickly I admire people when I see them. I think people are very fucking cool. They got some crazy shit going on. I just moved into this uh, apartment complex here. I moved my office to here. And I'm rapidly getting to know the neighbors. And one of the neighbors, you know, we, we're getting to know each other. And already, the good looking guy on a cane, okay, young man. 
And I just said, hey, what's going on? And he told me what had happened. And I was like, fuck. But maybe he didn't realize what was happening inside of me. Because at that moment, I was admiring that man's ability to deal with pain. Not only that, he had a beautiful daughter with him. Shout out to Elevated Barber from downtown San Jose. What's going on, brother? Um, he had a beautiful daughter with him. And I knew he was taking his daughter for a walk. They go for walks because I'd seen them around. And here he was with a cane hurting because he had gotten into a major accident and was rehabbing. It's all right, brother. And at that moment, I admired him. And I admired that he was a good father. And I admired that he was overcoming the pain, right? Time goes forward, a few more interactions. But every time, I catch myself admiring people. When you admire people, something interesting happens. They feel really good. I want you to think about somebody admiring something you do. In fact, if you're an artist, or if you're an entrepreneur, or if you're a leader, these three, I want you to imagine somebody really admiring your art, what that feels like. Like really, truly, like truly admiring or your leadership. Why? Because these are things that people don't really talk positive about you, right? They may kiss your ass, but they don't really talk positive about you or they disgenuinely compliment your art, right? But imagine being really admired, like Elevated Barber right there, okay? Or Cali Pack, both great barbers. So imagine like really admiring their, their, their work, going to work and be like, damn, like you use all these tools and it takes a lot to keep it clean and there's a lot more to, you know, my mom's been a hairstylist for over 40 years. So there's a lot more to, than just cutting hair. There's a whole art in the way you clean the place, set it up, the way you treat the customers. And if you began to admire that, something very powerful happens. Now, this is what the process I'm teaching you tonight. When you start to push out admiration energy, what I'm telling you now, I learned from L. Ron Hubbard. Okay? You should always give proper acknowledgement to where information comes from. All right? If I learned it from, from Jesus, it would be Jesus. If it was Satan, it would be Satan. It would make no difference to me. Okay? God bless anybody that told me anything that helped my life. Let's start there. Okay? Let me just tell you something right now. I don't care what religion you were, what color your fucking face was, what your income looked like, whether you fucking ate your food uh, as a vegan or not vegan. If you gave me an idea that helped change my life, God bless you forever. Think about it. Somehow you were able to say something or do something, you read something, and your whole life changes. Isn't that magic? If you want to change, start reading. That's it. You can't be the same person after you read. Some people go, I hate reading. Okay, get audiobooks. Audiobook is a book that they read for you. You just play it on your phone, okay? I, I know I had to define that because I literally had a conversation earlier with somebody and they were in a lot of trouble and I said, hey, you got to get this audio book. And he came back and said, is that like where the book is read to you? I was like, oh, shit. We're way behind here. <laughs> so an audio book is when you download the book, the actual book, but someone reads it. So you don't even have to read, but you can go through a whole book. So like you're driving... I listen to audiobooks. In the morning, I listen to audiobooks all the time, right? All the time. Okay, cool. So this feeling of admiration is very cool. Very cool. Let me show you some magic when it comes to seduction. All the men. Start with the men, okay? The next time you look at a beautiful woman and you feel that sense of, oh, my God, what I would do to have sex with you right now. <laughs> Isn't that gross, girls? That's exactly what we think. <laughs> Like, look at that beautiful woman. My God, I can't wait to have sex with her. <laughs> like, what is wrong with us? Because when you say it, it just sounds so stupid, right? Like, we should be able to, we should write that on the chalkboard growing up to see the absurdity of the statement, right? Every, every, every fucking 10-year-old boy goes up to the chalkboard and says, I have imagined having sex with all the girls. I have imagined having sex with all the girls. I have imagined having sex with my babysitter. I have imagined having sex with my teacher. I have imagined having sex. And oh my God, little Johnny, I'm sorry. Sit down. 
I tell you, tell your mom and dad, Joey, come up. I have a imagine having sex with my teacher. I have a oh, is this a joke, a foul joke? Yeah, it is, by God. Yeah, it's a total fucked up joke God played on us, all right? Ha, ha, ha. Guess who's not fucking laughing about it? Nobody, all right? It's suffering for this shit. Do you think we want to suffer, girls? Girls, let me ask you a question. Do you think we want to suffer? Do you know how easy it would be if we all fell in love with one girl and that was the end of the world for us? God, what a blessing. Imagine the stress off of our shoulders. Suddenly you just shut everything off and you couldn't even see women anymore. It's, it's like, uh, you know, you're just, you're just so focused all the time, right? But no, fuck no. Fuck no. We have been cursed, okay? But anyway. Anyways, when you have admiration, so let's, let's imagine a beautiful woman, right? If you can, and you got you to practice, okay? Practice means fail. <laughs> practice doesn't mean you got it. Practice means get ready to fail. So you got to, basically I'm saying, you got to get ready to fail at this a bunch of times when I say that, okay? I want you to practice, get ready to fail at this, <laughs> um, looking at her and instead of wanting to have sex with her, admiring her beauty, as like, a, as like a sculptor would or a painter would, or I like to think of it like nature, like God painting, you know, God painting. Like, look at that. Like today, uh, there was a red rose. It actually had a red rose. And it was just so fucking beautiful, this fucking rose, right? So I'm in the car and I'm like sticking it to my nose. And she's like, look at how soft it is. And I'm just like, I'm tripping on this rose. And then I was like, aren't flowers the coolest fucking things in the world? I mean, look at how pretty that thing is. It's like nature just, just like Hella took her time, was like, here's a perfect shade of red. Let's put some petals. How many? Enough to fuck with your senses so much that you think it's beautiful. What kind of texture should we give it? Uh, make it its own rose texture. N what is it, velvet? Does it feel like velvet? What is that thing, right? No, 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 it's light velvet. It's soft. Like what? Soft like what? like a rose. Give it a green stem. Oh, here we go. Let's give it some perfume. Shh, shh, shh. What kind of perfume was that? It's just a rose. Like this thing is like the prettiest thing in the world. Today I realize how pretty flowers really are, especially roses. But the admiring of that rose, if you could do that to a woman, and if you knew how to speak on it, you feel it? Speak on it. If you knew how to speak on it, you would touch a part of her soul that hasn't been touched in a while. That level of compliment is quite intense, man. But it takes practice. Hold on, I've got a guess. It's like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I wonder who it is tonight. Is it a hot girl? Because it always <laughs> is. Like, Mr. Like, Rogers. Like, like, oh, it's you. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> shooting that way, so all this is no camera. You can sit here. Okay, right? cool. That's right here. Hey, no, the camera. It's just right there. <laughs> That's great. Every podcast or every show, there'll be like a new hot girl that comes in. We just don't know who it is. Some will come on camera, some won't. Some will be in underwear, some won't. All right? You know who it is tonight. Some here. See? Hear their voices. I try to guess who that was. Have I heard that voice before? Okay. Now, what about from women to men? How do we do this admiration thing, okay? Instead of looking at him and thinking about what you could get from him, okay, which is fine, just like we want to have sex with you, you would want to look at us and, I don't know, get some something, it's fine. And I know a lot of my girlfriends, probably maybe all of them, just like, I don't. I, that's, that's probably why you're my girlfriend, just so you know, okay? But instead of that, if you thought to yourself, how you could admire his hustle to get that. Or how you could admire his ambition or his confidence. Or you admire the fact that a man, you know, has a vision and can do something in life. That level, if you fed it to us in conversation, you would touch us in a way that you would fuck everybody up, I'm telling you. <clears throat> 
Anthony Dugan is a beatboxer, as far as I know so far still, okay? I only know off of Instagram. He's on right now. So let's watch this, okay? A girl could say, you're a great beatboxer. Wow, that's amazing. He'd feel good. He'd feel good. Wow, that's so good, man, blah, blah, blah. But to take it further, she would say, when you beatbox, it's like I see something else in you, like something wakes up in you. Why did you choose to beatbox? You could have done anything. Why that? Oh, okay, well, I'm being him, obviously, but I'm being a version of him. I'm being me with that skill. Hello, well, uh, you know, it could have. And now what's happening? I'm starting to open up a little bit. I'm opening another door into my mind and heart. Now, if she plays this properly, I say, you know, I was doing this, and then I saw this, and then I thought, blah, blah, blah. I explained, I explained my way. And she literally becomes fascinated by it. She's admiring it. She goes, wow. She goes, that is so cool. And then she says something like this. How often and when do you practice? And I say, oh, well, pretty much all the time, I guess. I'm practicing that. Yeah, but ever like, would you ever let anybody watch you practice? Why? I think it would be cool to watch you get better at this thing and see how, because no one sees you practice. I'd love to see what that would be like. Okay, uh, as a guy, I'm done. Girls, I'm just telling you. Okay? Why? Because I'm, I'm growing in size and power talking to you. I'm going to walk away and do my art better. After that conversation, I'm going to go and I'm going to beatbox better or harder. Or, or you, you know what? You awaken something in me. That's what you're supposed to be able to do to your man, just so you know. You're supposed to awaken it. My girlfriends know there's one subject that is just never ever, ever, ever going to be compromised. And that's the subject of me and other women, period. Okay? There's the reason for this. This is my art. You have to be very, very, very careful when you fuck with an artist while he's doing his art. If he's as passionate as I am. I've given my entire life to this thing. The reason you know me is because of this thing. The reason these girls are with me is because of this. Well, I know how I have these skills. Listen carefully. I have experienced many times in relationships with girls where they will say something, whether they know it or not, but it slightly attacks me being the seducer that I am of life. Like maybe she felt bad because I gave her too much attention. Okay, this is one of the worst things that a girl can do around me. Why? This is my art, okay? Slow down, bitch. When I play this song, the world listens. And a lot of people enjoy it. And there's groupies lined up to take your place. Guess what's not going to happen? I am not not going to go on stage and play my fucking song because you're fucking feeling bad about it. Go get with somebody else. Okay? All right. That's the negative attack of what we were talking about. When you get into an argument with somebody that you love, you normally attack that, especially if you're a woman. Guys don't. We do it less. Sometimes we have and we feel real bad for it. Don't do it, okay? What the woman does, yep, is she goes right to the core of what you do. Let's say, for example, you're, uh, you love teaching children baseball. You, you're, you're, that is your fucking thing. She knows that's your passion. In a fight about cleaning the dishes or whatever bullshit, she will say to you, and you're a terrible role model for those these poor kids. You know, they don't even like you coaching them. And it has nothing to do with what's going on. And she'll just stab right into your soul. Meanwhile, you have been thinking to tell her, listen, fat ass, you put on 40 pounds since we got together. 40 pounds, you fucking hippo. But in the worst heated argument you still bite your tongue because you can't allow yourself to be that cruel and you you know i can't say that right you're still protecting her 
That's your mind. She doesn't even know. In her mind, she's pulling everything out, dude. Everything. Right? You have a, <laughs> anything she knows will be used against you at that moment. Let's go back to what we were saying in the beginning. How much do you know about yourself? You know, in Fight Club, one of my favorite movies, there's a line that says, how much does a man know about himself or how much do you know about yourself if you've never gotten in a fight with anyone? Okay, all right, well, I'm sure that's true to some degree. But I have a better quote, okay, one that works way better. How much do you know about yourself if you don't sit there and relate to other people? What's your tolerances, right? What's your prejudices? What do you hate so much? What do you love so much? What moves you? <clears throat> what gets on your nerves? What's something you won't stand for? Like me, me injustice. Holy shit. Fucking, let me tell you, that is it. If I see somebody who's innocent being unjustly treated, I, I don't know something worse. I mean, that could be a kid, that could be an adult, that could be a black, that could be a white, that could be a cop. I don't give a shit. If you're innocent and you're being picked on, okay, then I am fucking Archangel Michael for whoever the fuck is the other. I will fucking go to war for you. I'm telling you right now. Okay, I, I can't, can't stand for that. I just cannot stand for that. I cannot live with myself if, if I see an injustice. You have no idea how many times I put my whole life in danger trying to save some fucking asshole that I don't even know. Okay? I think my, one of my favorites was I was with my girlfriend, Cynthia, at the time, and we were on this south side of San Jose, it's in Blossom Hill. And they have a, this is for all my San Jose people, there's a Chili's over there by um, Chili's is on San, um, Blossom Hill and Almaden. You know what that is? Yeah. Right? Okay. The little chilies yeah. across the street, mattress, whatever the fuck it is. So it's nighttime. I'm leaving Chili's with Cynthia. And um, as, as we're driving, I look to the left, you know, and I see this Indian guy, looks like a regular Silicon Valley Indian man walking. Not a very good posture. And uh, he looks older. But I look and I see coming his way are three guys that look pretty thugged out, but they don't also look friendly. Like, it's okay to, to be thugged out, but it's not okay to not be friendly in that moment when I'm seeing somebody older. Like So it caught my attention. And as we were driving, I, I, I kept, like, looking in my rear view, look, turning around. She was like, what's that? I said, I got a bad feeling about this over there. And she's like, why? And she goes, well, what do you I said, hold on. And she was always game for shit like this. She was, like, a total social justice warrior and shit. I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I roll by slow. They haven't, they haven't intersected each other yet but they're going towards each other i roll slow i look at the indian man he looks at me because i'm kind of rolling slow i go past i look at the three guys they all kind of look at me i go ah oh, i don't have a good feeling about this ah oh, fuck go up one more light make a left come back as i'm coming oh my god what do i see i see the guys pass him and one guy shove him like this from the back and he kind of stumbled Son of a bitch, the heat rose to my face. I punched the fucking gas, and I, I saw them saying something. I didn't know he was kind of like scared like that. I fucking U-turned. I went right into the fucking parking lot. I jumped out the fucking car. I was like, hey! And I didn't even, I'm not even thinking, right? And they all looked at me. I started walking super aggressively towards them, right? I was like, hey, leave him the fuck alone. And then I just kind of back up. I'm leave him the fuck alone. I'm getting super aggressive. Like, and then I stood next to the Indian guy. There was three guys just kind of like looking and they're not saying anything. I said, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? It's an old man. Get the fuck out of here. And they're like, get the fuck out of here. Man, I was, ah. I felt like if I had like Wolverine claws, I'm like, they would have been dead, right? And so one of them was just like, oh, fuck you. I was like, dude, get the fuck out of here. Like, you don't understand. This is not like. I'm not joking with you. You, 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 you. You're gonna get hurt really bad. At least you, the one who fucking spoke. Maybe the other two would stomp my head in or stab me to death, but one of you is gonna get really fucking hurt right now, dude. Because I'm gonna reach one of you. Good luck. Good luck. You're fucking toast, bro. And so, fuck you, man, whatever. They turn on and left. So then this guy, he looks at me like I'm fucking Batman because I remember thinking to myself, I remember thinking to myself, like, if he's like, who are you? I should say, I'm Batman. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking cool. But uh, no, he just kind of looked at me, and it was the weirdest thing. I was like, you okay? He's like, yeah, yeah. 
I said, all right, well, be careful when you walk around, okay? Don't put your shoulders forward. Don't walk at night around here. And he's like, okay, okay. And then I'm, me, I'm expecting like a thank you. Like, hey, thank you for that or something, right? And he's like, just turns his head and starts walking. And I'm like, wait, hold on. So I'm like standing there like, you're not, you're not even going to say thank you, man? I'm like, bro, what do you mean? I just saved you. We probably got jumped right now, right? He just walks away. And I get in the car and I say to Cynthia, he's called her Sia, Sia, the I said, Sia, that piece of shit didn't even say thank you. She starts laughing. She goes, did you do it? Anyways, injustice. Fuck that, okay? But you don't know these things about yourself until you interact with the world. So here's the lesson tonight. You have to stop being so afraid of talking to people, okay? Seriously. Because by opening up and talking to people, that's when you begin to grow. Otherwise, you stay exactly the same. I mean, do you like that little shell you created for yourself? Is it comfortable in there? Is, that's like the, the new fucking philosophy, right? I can see like cool girls like, I'm just fine, you know? I'm, I'm comfortable where I'm at. Okay. You know, why, like, why do you have to be retarded though? Why? Right? Like, you're, no, you're actually not fine. You're a human being. You crave attention and affection. And, and you know, like, all these things are important to us. You're not, you're not a mutant. You're not a fucking X-Men, all right? You, you just, you're fucked up. You're super fucked up. What's up? Okay? But please, don't spread that shit like it's cool. You're not cool if you're, if you're a fucking recluse by yourself, right? I just... I gave up. I gave up on love. Well, then die. I got an idea. Die. Did you just hear yourself? You gave up on love. What the fuck do you do then in life? You're telling me you've decided you're not going to love. And that's cool. What are you, in a movie? Huh? Is this a movie set? The fuck? Because it better not be real life you saying some stupid shit like that to me and expecting us to continue a good dialogue about like, oh yeah, that's cool, me too. Fuck love. Now, as a pickup and seduction artist, yeah, fuck love. Okay? While you give love. See? You know that's what the bad boy is, right? It's the fact that the bad boy cares that she likes. It's not that he doesn't care. If he truly, 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 truly didn't care, she couldn't hang. It's the fact that she knows he fucking cares a little bit. That's what makes him attractive. You get that? That's why people can't play the, the part well, right? Because they don't understand that. They think, well, if you, you should just don't give a fuck about her. No, 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 no. No, no woman is going to want to be with you if you don't give a fuck about her. And if there is a woman by chance who, who wants to be with you, you should run from her. You're telling me you want to be with a woman who doesn't care if you give a fuck about her? What the fuck capability does she have of giving a fuck about you then? See, we have to analyze these stupid things people say. But all we have to do is take a look that everyone's relationship except mine are failing. Simple. They're all failing. Mine aren't failing. Yeah, there's issues, but that's the growth we just talked about. I don't know these girls, man. I've known them for the time that I've known them, and they've told me whatever they've told me, and I've tried my very best to understand them as much as I can. But it's an everyday understanding. I can't claim to know shit about them besides ex exactly what I just said, what they told me. We think we know people. I don't even know me. The fuck? I mean, are you as dynamic as me inside? Do you, do you go through these rapid changes of mood and thought and, and ideas and energy and like, is, is, is the inside like that too? Because if it is, like, how, how are you even worried about that person's opinion about you? Like, when you really get that that's what everybody's going through, their opinion doesn't matter. 
The only reason why my opinion matters in my relationship is if you follow my opinion, we will survive better. Thus, listen to me. But not because any other reason. Just listen to the person who can do the fucking job. And then we can all be okay. Like, if you don't know how to cook, we shouldn't listen to you about cooking. Why? Because you're not a fucking cook. So if people can't demonstrate good relationships, they need to shut the fuck up. Today on the panel, expert in communication and relationship, Dr. Robert Sanders. Yeah, Dr. Robert Sanders, I have a question. Sir, how long have you been married? Oh, well, I've been married with my current wife for three years. Okay, sir, what about your ex-wife? We were together for 10 years. And what happened, if you don't mind me? Well, uh, no, you're here to answer questions, but I got to know who the fuck you are. Your fucking certificate doesn't mean shit. Your life does, okay? Your life means something. Show me your life. Okay? Not your fucking degrees. Fuck your degrees. All right? Fuck your degrees, every one of them. Nobody gives a shit anymore. Okay, so we want to start relating. If you want to grow, you got to relate. Okay, watch this. Have you ever related to a chicken? Like, have you ever had a chicken, the one that lays eggs? Or a baby chick? If you've never touched a baby chick or a chicken, the first time you do, you have to expand as a person slightly. Because not like a dog or a cat. It's a chicken. It's a baby chick. They feel weird in your hand. They do this thing. They're like in pieces. If you ever hold a baby chick, it's like the legs moving here, the arms that way. And it's like, oh, you got to try to keep it together. Now, I hate touching birds. I, when I was younger, I had all kinds of birds. And now, when I think about grabbing a bird, ah, I don't like that feeling. <laughs> Why? I don't know. And I hate touching bugs. Oh, that's the worst. But I do recognize I'm missing out on so much of life. I'm so envious when I see somebody put a bug on their hand. Like, look at this beautiful beetle. I'm like, oh my God, if that thing was anywhere near me, I'd have to shoot it with a shotgun. There's no way that's going to get near me. There's these beetles. I don't think they're scarab beetles because I thought they were only in Egypt, but they're in America. I ran into these twice. No, three times. One was in Florida when I was younger. One was in L.A. Both were at Universal Studios. I don't know if they breed these fucking things over there. And a third time, it was uh, at my martial arts academy. This thing, when it flies, sounds like a helicopter. Okay? It's like... <laughs> like, you, like you hear this machine gun in there, and it's a beetle. And when you look at it, it's colorful. It's like a fucking fluorescent green-blue. And you just go, oh my God, what is that disgusting thing? And then it lands and it looks like a space creature made small. Okay, so this thing is scary as fuck. I was standing in line and this thing, I heard it. I heard it, I looked up and no, it's not a June bug, Jess. This thing is, is big, okay? I heard I'm standing in line, it was midday, it was sunny, and I heard and I was like, what's going on? And then I caught what I thought was a fucking hummingbird. And I was like, oh, oh, it's not a hummingbird. It's a bug, and I was like, oh my God. And this thing, for some reason, was aiming at my head. So it was like, and I was like, oh my God, is anybody else seeing this? <laughs> this, is, this is like a, a, the mummy, you know, it's returned, it's going to kill me. And then it ran into a backpack of a guy in front of me. It was like, thunk! I mean, it was, it, like, like it, it pushed the guy almost. It went, thunk, and it fell to the floor. Are they blind? They can't be blind, just as they're blind, no. No, they're not blind. They'd be running into everything. So then I look on the ground, and this fucking thing looks like a golden color on the outside, green blue on the inside, eyes that I can see, which you shouldn't be able to see the bug's eyes. And they just, and I was like, here was my problem. I didn't want to step on it. Like that would be like stepping on a mouse. Would it like squirt everywhere? Or, or would, would I not kill it? Would it get mad? 
Like I step on it, I pick up, and it's like, oh, you bastard. <laughs> and it's like, and it goes right into my face because I was like, how? Look, what I need to kill that thing is a fire extinguisher or two raid. Shh, raid is fucking bomb. I can't, that shit, listen, it's right by my bed. Okay? You know why it's by my bed? Because you ever wake up and the spider is between you and your weapon. <laughs> hey, you guys ever you guys ever get stuck between you and the weapon and the creature is in the middle of the house. And how you have to maneuver around this thing like you go sideways like this, and then it like moves like it's it's haunting you and shit. And it like it, it opens its wing. You didn't even know it had a wing up until then. It was not a flying creature. <laughs> It was just like a, a, a tank. <laughs> and then you get closer and it just kind of does like one of these like wings and you, and you go, those are big wings. Those are big fucking wings. It has a wing under the wing. Have you seen those things? What is that? Is that a picture of that? Maybe, maybe that's it. I don't know. Those are a bunch of green larvae. But anyways, so I've learned not only should you always have a weapon, when you sleep, that if a human attacks you, like they rush into the house, boom, you hear gunshot, pop, pop, pop. Okay, and about probably, I think Electro knows, it takes about a second and a half for me to go from the bed to the door, on the floor, with knife in my hand, cutting your fucking tendons, okay? I move hella fast when it comes to that. I've done it before. My friend Paya, who's a fighter, got to experience this in LA. <laughs> he spent that in my house. I told him, don't sneak around the house, bro. Don't sneak around the house. And the fucker snuck around the house. I forgot it was him. And then I was on top of him with a knife like this as he was yelling, no. And I was like, it was like a movie, you know? And really, I'm, I, I literally almost killed my friend one night, okay? But I moved so fast. I remember I, I woke up and I was like, is there somebody in my fucking kitchen? And I lived in a studio where the kitchen and the bedroom and the, everything was in one little spot, right? There was, you could see the kitchen while you slept. And so I open my eyes and I see somebody's in the kitchen. And I'm like, my heart just jumps into my mouth. And I'm like, no, this can't be real. But I'm like, oh my God, there's somebody in the fucking kitchen. I totally forgot the fool was spending the night. <laughs> and I fucking watch him from the corner of my eye, pretend like I'm asleep, this fucking guy walking off slowly to the kitchen. I reach under my fucking pillow. I grab a knife this big. It was like a butcher knife that I had. I breathe, I relax everything. And I think to myself, I'm gonna shock him with my yell, but I'm not gonna stab him yet, but I'm gonna get real close, and if he moves, I'm gonna stab him. Bam! I fucking jump. Ah! He's like, ah! I had one hand on top of the fucking wall like this, and the other knife like this, ah! Okay? After that, he begged me every night, because he stayed for like a week over there. Bro, put the knife away, promise me, there's gonna be a knife tonight. I said, no. If you're going to get up, turn on the fucking light, wake me up. Don't sneak. Don't tap me. You know, just don't be sneaky about shit. All right? I'm a little on edge here. <laughs> I just moved to L.A. I didn't know nobody, and I was not in a good place. But anyways. Oh, is this going to die? Oh, man. It's getting a little bit more. You can sleep, dude. I'll wake you up. Oh, no. Seriously. I ain't been working all day. <laughs> You kick that up to on the side. Yeah, and then if, if you put your feet on it and push, see that? Oh, way back. Yeah. This is great. It's nice, right? Yes. You're welcome. Okay. So all I'm saying is this, look. When it comes to relationships, the rules you have with each other, the do's and don'ts, should really come down to survival and nothing else. Because everything else is just made up shit. I was talking to my friend today. Uh, look, uh, you know what I would love to do? I would love to name drop at this point, right? Because if I name dropped, you would know how cool I really am, right? So I'm just going to tell you, he's a celebrity that you would know by name. And he's in the fight world way up there. Okay? Way up there. Movies and shit too. So I was talking to him today. And he says, how do you do it with all your girlfriends? I'm struggling so hard with just one 
one person. I said, that's the point, brother, come on. Because I've been trying to tell you this whole time. I said, the answer to that question is the answer to every other fucking question. I said, the proof is in the women because you see how hard that shit is. But I said, he goes, but I'm sure you still have problems. I said, yes, but not like you. I'm going to tell you the difference. I said, the problems we have will be problems of nature. It'll be a man-woman dynamic. It won't be some made-up social fucking problem. It won't be what he or she said or he or she thought. It won't be what or which fucking uh, person we should vote for. Now, we don't give a fuck about things like that, okay? It would just be a, something that would have to be a natural discrepancy between man and woman that would happen in anywhere. We don't create problems that we don't need. And all I ask in a relationship, and that's what you, all you need to ask as a guy, is that she acts in a way to keep safe the creation of the relationship. You get that? That's all. And these are nice words you can use when you get with a woman. Or when you're about to get with her. Or when you're already with her. You say, look, what I'm asking you to do is to have certain rules and boundaries and guidelines to keep safe what you and I create in a relationship. And then from there, you can break things down. Like, if you talk to other guys, here's why it's not safe, right? And she resists it, but you talk, and you, I mean, the truth is the truth, okay? There's no other rules, okay? All the rest of the rules are fucking lame. They're just somebody told you, or you heard somebody else, or you have some insecurity, all right? If you can't break it down to survival, here's the reason why you shouldn't wear that if you go over there, because if you do, this is what happens. Then fucking no one cares. Okay, I told you in the beginning, when I get into a conversation with somebody, I admire them. And when, when um, like, let's, let's just say, it's, it's sometimes you find these people on Target. You guys go to Target, if you have Target. You find, like, weird employees there sometimes, right? Sometimes you find, like, three or four super cool employees, and you're just like, why are you working at Target? Like, you're actually hot. You guys have, like, a little team over there of hotness? Huh? Is this, like, the fucking... Underwear department, you guys get together and bang each other in the back. Oh, well, who are you people? You shouldn't be working at Target. There's them. But then there's the other one you find where you come to the clerk. They always put this person in the clerk. They don't put them somewhere helping you. Where is, where is, the, where is the shoes? Where is whatever, right? This person has to ring you up. And you walk up and you go, oh, my God. It's like Star Wars. What is that creature? What planet did this fucking animal just arrive from, right? They, have you ever seen that shit? For example, it'll be like a super skinny, small, black boy or girl, you can't really tell, with super big eyes, small teeth, and hair that could go man or woman, and with a voice that could go man or woman. So you start looking for tits or something, and you're just like, God, I can't figure you out. And the person's wearing glasses, and you're just like, like God just shit all over you. Right? It looked like God was drunk as fuck when it came to you. <laughs> just Here, do this, do this. This will be funny. This will be funny. Come here. God's kicking it with his homies, right? Come here, watch this one. No, no, I'm going to make this one fucked up. Watch. Okay. And I'm going to make him, her, or it live right next to its crush. <laughs> so what is it? Is it a boy or a girl? I don't know either. I'm going to surprise everyone. So everyone, well, hey, what's up? <laughs> if you're joining on Instagram, you can click the link in the bio and arrive to the lecture here. So every once in a while you find that, that creature, more often than not, at Target. Or another kind is like an enormous, enormous white guy who looks like he's 15 in his face, but he could be 37. And he's got this orange haircut like this. And he's wearing glasses too. And like his upper body, shoulder to chest looks normal, but then his lower body is like a pear, like a giant fucking pear. And that guy, and he's got like a super thin voice. Like, okay, wait, wait. Like, oh my God, what are you? I just ran into the little black thing, now I'm into the you. And you start looking around for like, for the Jedi to arrive. 
You know what I mean? It's like, we're in the midway point of Galaxy X because we're about to fucking, I don't know what the fuck, Target is probably that place where all aliens go. I just realized it's like, it's like men in black. That's why we all love that place. It's like a center for all aliens to arrive. That's what Target is. Oh, that's why it's called Target. You can find it. I just decoded Target's whole thing, dude. Target is a place where all the aliens, it's like men in black. Okay, anyways. Even those people, I swear, if you see me talk to them, I admire them. How do you admire a tiny little black thing like that? Simple. I look at it and I go, you must be hurting, man. Like, I'm a hot guy and I'm hurting. Like, if I looked like you, fuck, man, how are you even outside? Like, you are strong, right? So I actually, truly, I know it sounds funny, but I truly admire them. Because how do you even get out? Right? Or I look at that giant white thing and I, I'm like, like, I know you have crushes on girls, bro. Like, how do you go to bed? Are you just, have you just said to yourself, like, I'm just going to be in Sims video game world forever? Like, did you give up? How are you doing it? Like, I have questions for these people. Why? Because by asking them questions, I can see and learn something about me. Like, how could you be so strong? You're so ugly. I mean, I know it sounds funny, but I'm talking about the truly ugly people. I'm not talking about like, oh, that person's ugly. I don't like the way they look. I mean, like, that thing that you look at and you go, this is not okay. It's uncomfortable to look at this animal. That, how do they go out? And they always have like those three or four friends who seem to not see it. Right? Like the, like the, like the creature has like a hand that's a boiling ooze of some nastiness. And their friends are like, ah, oh, they grab their hand, put it in their mouth, lick it, put it all over their food in their salad. I'm like, wait. Is this like an overcompensation of that thing? Because why are you guys like, wow, it makes me feel bad for not being able to do that. It takes a lot of strength to do that, right? <laughs> you see? So you have to start to admire Anything you can in the person. Anything. Like I even, when I'm watching you guys listen sometimes, like right now, I can tell that you're being affected like in a really positive way. And it's funny, I admire that. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, I love that feeling. I'm not, I'm not that person now, but I love being that person. Like I love being you. Right now I'm me, I'm the book, right? but I love reading the book and feeling what you feel. Like, fuck yeah, right? So in the interaction, if you catch me talking to you, you get this good feeling that, that you, know what, you know what you would say? It would feel like this. It feels like, no, he's really just down to earth, really cool. That's what it feels like. Like, no, he's just like, he's just really cool, man. Because the person is admiring you. If someone's short, admire how short they are. If they're fat, admire how fat they are. What do you mean? Like, how do you do it? How do you sit on the toilet? No, really. Do you have to aim your ass cheeks around it? What do you do? I'm talking about the really big people. I'm not making fun of them. I truly want to know. It's a problem. I know it sounds funny. But my life sounds funny, too, if I told you all the shit I do. That's the whole point. The whole point is no matter how perfect we try to become, we're still a joke. Like that's a fact, right? The fact is you could be the most perfect human being. You're still a fucking joke. You still have to hold your fart. <laughs> I mean, I wonder how many kings hold their fart. Or do they just like, fuck this, it's my kingdom. Or do they even think about it? See, that's the question. 
If you're, a, I don't know, maybe the, I'm sure the Korean president, he don't care. He probably farts in people's faces. But I wonder, does Donald Trump hold his fart? You know? What, what, what do these powerful people do if they're on a long drive and they've super got to take a shit? Oh, well, they just go into the bus or something. Yeah, but then what happens if they come out and it smells really bad? Are they embarrassed? Well, I'm going to tell you something. Yes, they are. Because the title doesn't take away the embarrassment. The title is a man-given idea. The embarrassment is a nature-given feeling. Your man title, your man-made title doesn't get rid of nature. For example, just because he's a gynecologist doesn't take away his nature of wanting to see your pussy and touch it. Okay? There are certain fields that should be banned to certain genders. For example, gynecology should be a field for women only. Why? Motherfucker, touch one of my girl's vaginas under any goddamn circumstance. Are you kidding me? Hi, honey. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Honey, can you come to the gynecologist with me? Sure. Okay. Go over there. Hi, Dr. Roberts. This is, this is my boyfriend, AZD. You heard his music. He's a badass. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? Okay, well, let's sit down. So how's it been, how's it been going, Susan? Oh, it's been good. I just had a little bit of itching or something going on. Okay, well, uh, let's take a look at it. Go ahead, sit back. Hold on. <laughs> what, what do you do? Just like, <laughs> do you look away? Do you get on your phone and go on Instagram? Do you go, I need to step outside? Because that's worse. I'm gonna, uh, hey, what are you doing? Right? Like, what the fuck do you do? And why isn't this part of a movie somewhere? Because it's so awkward. Right? Do you say shit like, well, doctor, like, I was there earlier. I mean, do you try to be cool? Like, <laughs> like, no, no. This situation should never occur. All right? Ever. Okay. So I'm saying the title of gynecologist doesn't make him not a man. You know what I'm saying? And like the title of stepdad, right? Which means he doesn't share your blood. Right? That guy is a total stranger who would fuck you so good if he could. Okay? Just get that shit through your fucking simple ass head. I don't care how uncomfortable the shit may sound to you. It's the fucking truth. Okay? The title does not take away the genes. Get the fuck out of here. It's the same thing when your girl, when your girl, right before she meets you, is booty popping and listening to this and doing all that shit. And then she meets you and she's not all about that. Well, are you about that or are you not about that? Do you have a switch in there? I wish I had one. Can I find a switch like that? Where is it? Now I'm no longer into other girls. Look how easy that was. Finish, game over. No, no, no. Now I'm gonna tell you a secret about a woman. Are you ready? I'm gonna tell you a secret about a woman. A woman can change so fast that she could literally go from booty hopping bitch to wifey. They say you can't make a, a, a housewife out of a whore. Well, I have. How's that? Many times. Until we got divorced. Then they went back to being a whore. See, I told you. But not when they were with me. Not when they were with me. Well, that's why they're not with you anymore. Okay. You feel better about yourself? You want to lecture about that? What's going on? A woman can change, okay? Very rapidly. Very rapidly. Why? Because she's yin, yin energy, receptive energy. Okay? She molds herself. You could say she lacks integrity. <laughs> integrity is when a structure is held firm, okay? You'd be telling the truth. But she's a great creature, right? That's why I spent my whole life studying her and collecting her. <laughs> you know how, they, you know, how scientists collect, you know. I've, I've been through the far reaches of Earth and I have collected the best specimens. 
that Homo sapiens has to offer when it comes to their women. I got the Mexican, I got the Russian, I got the Irish, I got the Vietnamese, I got the Mexican. I said, Mexican. This is great. Where's your black girl? You know, I hear that. I heard that at the fucking strip club. It's like, where's your black girl? I was like, I don't like black girls though. Ha, oh, that's so mean. I said, no, you're beautiful. I just don't like black girls. Like, there's not a problem. I also don't like Indian girls, right? Like, I'm not supposed to like everybody and everything. Why do you think I'm supposed to walk around and be like, no, I, I like black girls too. No, I hate black girls. I, I can't stand them, okay? And then recently I keep meeting like cute ones. So last night I met one that was super cute. And I was like, my God. She's like, what? I said, look at me. Like, how did I fucking miss you? Where the hell have you been? She goes, oh, I see you every time you come in here. I said, well, fuck it, I don't see you. And then I go, oh, it's because you're black. So I didn't see you. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, I don't like black girls. I don't. I go, but I'm really attracted to you. Look at your face. It's fucking so nice, right? Now, how can you not take that compliment? Look at how genuine it was. It's almost romantic. Right? Because it's like a super compliment. What if I said this? Are you ready? What if I said this? Oh, I love black girls. I don't, as long as their skin is black. Oh, nice compliment. Come here. You're so hot. Right? The opposite is, is, is a bad compliment. So it's a super good compliment for me to be like, I can't stand black girls. Damn, you're hot. Come over here. I, I, I would look at you differently. You're making me look at the black race differently. For example, I used to think Orientals were super ugly, the chicks. Oh, my God. So ugly. Right? They all look like the same person to me. Couldn't stand them. All of them. Not only do they look like the same person, they do the same fucking makeup and wear the same fucking heels and the same fucking purses. Like, are you the same fucking person? Clone Jitsu, if you fucking do Naruto? Yeah, but then I got with Cristali, my girlfriend. She's doing the means. Son of a bitch, I think they're the hottest thing on the planet now. I mean, I'm like, that's amazing that there's like 300,000 of you that look exactly the same. That's like 300,000 hotties, right? I'm about to just go to Vietnam and have 400 girlfriends because I think a dollar is worth like 250 million pounds or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's so ridiculous. Like here, I go to fucking 7-Eleven, I come back $45 later today. 7-Eleven! Seven fucking eleven. I came back literally forty-five dollars later. I was like, "Are you kidding me? What did I get?" Right. Well, all I gotta do is go to some third-world fucking country, right? And with like three thousand dollars a month, be a fucking king. What are you guys doing? Get out of here. I can't. I'm doing some shit. Okay. But wait till I'm done. You, where's Arash? Find him in the worst country on the planet. Okay? Go, go, I will be there. Why would you go there? Because even the worst place on the planet has an incredible place in it. I'll, I'll be in that part. And I'll probably buy the country. You know what I mean? Like, where is he at? Oh, there's a little country called Zagzag. What's Zagzag? Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, go over there. I'm the fucking king now. Why? Because with 3000 I was like a prince. With the money I made, I just went in there. I was like, who's the president? Come here. You're in my salary. The fuck you making $50 a day? What are you doing? You're embarrassing. You're embarrassing to your race. Let's get to work here. You guys have a fucking country. You ain't doing shit with it. Where's your natural resources? Come here. Let's put people to work. How old are you? 12? We're going in. Why? My country. There ain't no child labor law. Keep going. You know, you fucking walk. How old's your little kid over there? Five, come here. Come here, little five-year-old. Your job is to pick up the shoes everywhere you go. Go ahead. I'll give you a piece of gum at the end of the day. It's more than your ancestors ever got, you little shit. Let's go. Okay? Come back three generations later, fucking country of Zog Zog. It's the greatest country ever they ever fucking seen. Hottest women, right? Everyone's fucking communicating super sharp. Politicians don't know what to do with the Zog Zog fucking uh, uh, ambassadors. Because they're super communicators, right? They're admiring everybody. They don't even know what to do. The opponent comes back with like, Zog Zog is a shitty little country. He's like, you know what? I really respect that opinion. The fact that you can say it like that shows that you're a true character. Someone who can lead. Well, I'm just saying, you know, it's not that bad. Yeah. Yeah. And our president, 
holds his fart in too, just like you guys. Okay? Terrible. See, shouldn't we lighten up a little bit? Yeah? I think we should. I think life's a little serious. You guys like to get in these serious relationships, right? Hey, come here. Want to get serious? Got an idea? You want to get serious with me? Oh, my God. I whooped somebody's ass today, a, a female. Okay. In a very nice way, I whooped her ass. Okay. Do I need to get into that? No, don't need to get into it. It was, it was great, though. But here's what I don't like, okay? It was similar to this. It wasn't this, though. Listen to this, girls. And guys, listen. The girl who's like, like you're just trying to have a fucking good time. You're out trying to have a good time. She's out interviewing you for marriage proposal and four kids. Bitch, wrong place, wrong time, wrong culture. You're in a bar, ho. Okay? You're in a bar dressed like a fucking half slut, you stupid bitch. And you're going to fucking talk to me like, like you're going to interview me to be your fucking baby daddy? Why don't we start? Hey. Why don't we start by just trying to have a good interaction? What's up, guys? Click the link in the bio and come to the real lecture. Okay? Why don't we just try to have a good time? You know a secret to a good relationship? Have a good time with each other. Did anybody tell you that one? That's a good one. You know a secret to good friendship? Have a good time with each other. Secret to a good work? Have a good time with the employees. Secret to just being dope? Have a good time. Would I ever, ever date a guy? No. <laughs> you know, you know what's, what's scary is I say no, and then I go in the back of my mind, how do you know? And I'm not even gay, right? But that's, that's how crazy the mind is. See, the mind is insane. My mind thought, how do you know? Do you know how I know? Because I'm not gay. How's that? Right? I'm not going to get into a dialogue with my crazy-ass mind and go back and forth because then I'm going to lose, right? So I'm just going to laugh at the stupid thought that said, how do you know? How do I know? I know because I answered. That's how I know. The fuck am I supposed to do? Would you ever let your girlfriend sleep with other guys? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What are you asking me? It's so weird. <laughs> if my girlfriend's not one, look at another guy with interest, I will, I will absolutely break up with them with no chance of return. Okay? I tell you, they know this. If I ever, look, to, to, to become my girlfriend, requirement number one, you don't have eyes for other men. Like, straight up, man. And, and go ahead, try to seduce my girls. Like, that is it. If that's violated, there is no relationship for me because if there, there would have never been a relationship if that was the case. You see that? So when I get triggered inside to make a woman mine is when I can see she cannot see any other guys in her mind. That's my girl then, okay? All right, let's wrap it up. Here, let's do this. Let's do a little Q&A. I like it. If you guys have some questions, type it. If I'll answer someone, then we end it. If you have questions, young lady, you could ask. Use the restroom. You could, this is your home. <laughs> Thank you. You get comfortable. I am. Yeah. Comfortable. Aren't you normally comfortable in your underwear? Yeah. <laughs> She's on the right way. Um, yeah, it's such a big house. We're going to go make a right. Left. After you pass the corridors, there's two lions in a cage. Don't worry about them. They're already fed. Jump over the moat. There's an alligator, and then you'll see it. I'm in a one bedroom. I can reach over and close the fucking bathroom door. She's like, it's the right. There is no left. It's a bunch of right turns, and then you're outside. <laughs> you, you come in, you make a right. You're in, you're, you're in the kitchen, bathroom, and bedroom.
You make a left, you run into the wall. Then <laughs> you walk right out. <laughs> okay, can you love and be sexually open? Yes. Love and sex, they're not the same thing. They are related, but it's possible. Totally. You have a house while you're a cool boyfriend. Kind of. I kind of have a house. Okay. How can you turn a woman on with eye contact and tone of voice? Like this and like this. How am I going to teach you that? Can you please break it down to a process? Yeah, I'll tell you something about it. How can you turn a woman on with eye contact and tone of voice? Ladies and gentlemen, what is the best way to turn a woman on? I shall answer this right now once and for all for planet Earth until I surpass this answer in the future. I'm going to call you Sandy. You're Sandy right now. Sandy, what do you think is the best way for a man to turn a woman on? Let's see what Sandy says live. Live audience, looking hot over there. Beautiful mouth, lips, teeth, nice eyes, nice hair, nice hands, but you're bundled up in a sweatshirt. I can't see anything. <laughs> what would you say? Can you repeat the question again? What is, what is the best way you think for a man to turn a woman on? Amuse her. Amuse her. Give us an example here. Uh, then do more. Come on. Amuse. Uh, she said amuse her. I've never heard that. I didn't expect that to come out. But that's why I ask questions. Okay? Amuse her. What do you mean? Find a common interest. Find, find a common interest. Then what? And then make fun with it. They have fun with it. Have fun with it. Okay, we're getting there. It's close to what I thought. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Desiree, would you like to give it a try? What is the... You want to try it? I can unmute you. What do you think would be the best way... Desiree looking super hot over there. It's resonating to you guys. Desiree to me because I got it like that. No. I can't unmute you. Christian Delgado, please, my brother. Brother, I need to be able to have control over my goddamn show. Well... Christian may be gone or asleep, so you might have to type it until then. I will give the answer once and for all. Oh. Yeah, yeah, what's up? Go ahead. What's the best way you think? Um, Im imitation is always in entertaining. Imitation is entertaining. Now, we, we, that is almost so unclear that I don't know what to think about it. So let's try again. Say it for the, for the lames like myself who don't understand what that means. Um, I think it's really funny when people do impressions of other people, for example. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Okay, I got you. I'm going to work on my impressions next time I see you. I'll do Bill Clinton, George Bush, yeah. and a bunch of other jokers. Okay, that, that, that will turn you on? Yep. Shit. Guys, just ask. Thank you, guys. Right? Well, I guess every guy is going to be doing impressions. The next time we come on, right, people will be doing everything. Okay. All right, well, that's crazy. It makes me want to ask more. Who else do we have on there? Natalie Romero. I'm going to unmute you. If you're still listening, you're unmuted. What do you think is the best way for a man to turn on a woman, Natalie Romero? Communication. Okay, tell me more about it. That's just the word. How? What kind of communication? How? Show interest in her interests. Show interest in, in yes. what? In her interests. In her interests, which is similar to what you said, right? Okay. Show interest in her interests. Everybody listening to this, right? This is good. Thank you, Natalie Romero. You're welcome. Right. I love the way you said my name. I clicked it too early. It was almost sexual. It was like, oh, wow. You're welcome, Arad. Oh, wow. What's that? Just felt the inside. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to give you the answer. And I know it because I could use this to turn you on, to turn you on, to turn you on, and everybody else. The best way for a man to turn a woman on is with his personality. When she starts falling in love with the way you are as a person, it's game over. It's done. Now, 
all three people actually hinted towards that. But I don't know that I'm supposed to do impressions over there until her and I are hanging out and I find that out. Then I go through impressions. Why? Because I want to impress her with impressions. I don't give a fuck. And that part of my personality that tells a woman, hey, I'm going to do whatever the fuck it takes to get you now. I like that shit. It's your personality. So instead of eye contact and tone of voice, those things help. Muscles help. Tattoos help, money helps, all that. You turn her on with your personality. You could have a lot of money and you could turn her off with your personality. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, you see this? Watch, watch. Let me show you how I know this, okay? Watch, okay? You can just nod over there. You could be extremely good looking and turn her off with your personality. Yes or no? Yes. Got that? There goes looks, there goes money, all right? What else do we have in there? Uh, I don't care what you say because I can say you could have A, B, C and totally turn her off with your personality and the answer will be yes. That means that's the one thing that no matter what you have could turn her off, which means it's the one thing that no matter what you have could turn her on to. I take my bow. That's how I discover these things, man. That's what I'm telling you. You need to come to these lectures. You need to learn. You need to listen. You need to learn this information. It's going to fuck you up left and right. It's your personality that she falls in love with. Now, this is good news for us ugly guys. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, shout out to Mac Mike Kyle, one of the greatest fucking fighters that ever goddamn lived. He's online right now. What's up, brother? Brother, you got a check mark by your name. How the fuck do I get a check mark? I'm like, I am a celebrity. I'm known. And I'm that guy. Validate me. Seriously. How do you get a fucking check mark? You have to be extra cool to have a fucking check. Okay, that's how cool he is. Ready? Let me introduce you to my friend with a check mark on Instagram. Game over. You just whooped everyone's ass. All right. Anyways. You are, brother. Thanks, bro. Okay, we fall in love with people's personalities because it's their personalities that turn us off. So this is good news because if you weren't granted the looks, ah, you can work on your personality, man. And if you weren't granted the looks, dude, you're already ahead of the game. Work on your personality. Game over. You could already have anything you want. This is a bunch of personalities falling in love with personalities, not, not looks falling in love with looks. You're wrong. It's become very superficial. That's why relationships suffer. But when you say, like, when I tell my girlfriends I love them, I'm in love with their personality. Like, truly, I, I love the way they are as persons. How did you win over your girlfriend? I have four. I hate it when they bring me down to that level. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know what to say to you guys. Listen, it what would that be like? Okay, so you have a, a multi-billionaire, billionaire, right? In ratio of how much money people make, how many girls I have, the ratio, the way they look to other men, right? A multi-billionaire, and someone says, so what's it like being a millionaire? He's like, what do you mean? I'm a millionaire a billion times over, bro. Okay. Try keeping two hot girls, just two. To tell me how that goes. You won't have time to, you won't have time to shit. Okay. Because there will be complaints in each year. Okay. We fall in love with personality. Okay. Now, this is great because let's work on our personality. Oh my God, look how late it is. I got to end this shit. I'm sorry. Why did this happen? Okay, guys, I've been going for a long time. We got to end this. Listen, people fall in love with your personality. It's all about personality, okay? I'm working on mine. You work on yours. Simple. Let's just be better people, but be tough, okay? You need to be tough. Simple, right? The good guys, the good guys now have a monster. That's who I am. And I, I want my friends to be monsters, and they are, right? We're not the bad guys. We can do bad things here and there, but we're not the bad guys. Our intention is good. We like to help people. 
We want people to get better. We're creative. If we've had to hurt people or whatever, it's it was just because we have to defend ourselves. And every man has a right to defend himself. Okay? I am Be the best. Fuck the rest.